Good morning, good morning, Inspire Church Houston. Happy, happy Sunday. How are you guys doing? I hope that you are doing fantastic this morning. Listen, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will, we choose to rejoice and be glad in it because he's an awesome God this morning. I hope that you are excited to just worship the Lord today and be in the presence of a holy God. We wanna welcome each and every one of you, whether you're joining us online or in person welcome 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 so wherever you are get ready to enter it into the presence of the Lord I hope that you are on your way here if you haven't yet made it here don't forget that we still have our 11 a.m. service or our 2 p.m. Spanish so hurry 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 get here we're looking forward to seeing you don't forget sharing is caring so be a blessing and share this message to someone who needs to know that Jesus loves them amen Awesome. So don't forget, take the time to silence your cell phones because we don't want anything interrupting us as we are worshiping our God. So at this time, I'm going to ask that you kindly stand, look at your neighbor and tell them, come on up, rise and shine. Let us stand and honor the Lord as we enter in and welcome his presence in this place. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, Lord, we come before you this morning, O oh Lord. Father, we come to magnify your name, O oh God. Lord, we come, O oh Father God, to give you the praise for what is due unto you, O oh Lord God. Father, this morning, we choose to not let the rocks cry out, oh God. Father, as we look back at all that you have done for us and who you are, Father, we come to exalt the name of Jesus who is worthy to be praised. God, we come to exalt you over every situation, oh God. We come to magnify you, oh God, because you are King of kings and Lord of lords. So Holy Spirit, we invite your presence, oh God, as we come to give you a pure worship, oh God, because you are deserving of it all, oh God. Let chains fall off as we give you a worship and a praise that is due unto you this morning, God. I plead the blood of Jesus in this place, oh God. The blood that speaks a better word. In the name of Jesus, we pray and all in agreement say amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, Inspired Church. He is in this place. Amen. Come on, put those hands together. Here we go. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I praise in the valley. I praise on the mountain. How many have a testimony? I praise when I'm sure. I praise when I'm doubting. I praise when I'm numbered. I praise when surrounding. Cause praise is the water. My enemies drowning. Come on, church. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to pray. It's more than a sound My praise is the shout That brings Jericho down Here we go
declare it this morning. Come on. I praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Here we go. I praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Lord 
sing it, church. Have you tasted it, sin? Nothing is. Yeah, there's no other love that can compare to yours. Seconds, it's all right. We worship you, Jesus. There's none like you, and none can compare to you. Who is like our God in all the earth? There's none beside him, there's none above him, there's none beneath him. You're the only one who can. So we worship you, we give you glory. Stay in that place of worship because you are the way maker. You're the miracle worker. We trust you, God. Just take this moment right here and just begin to exalt him. He's here. So let your needs fill the room. Let your love for him fill the room. So I 
If you're a child of God, just give him another hand clap of praise this morning. There's, there's faith arising in this room, amen. I hope you feel it also when we watch it online. There's faith arising in this room. And God, while, we, while we're here in, the, in a moment of worship, in a moment of, of faith building, we also don't want to forget those names that are on the screens right now that need healing, that need a touch, uh, that need financial miracles, Lord God, that need um, just comfort, Lord God, in their homes. If the people that have lost, the families that have lost loved ones, Lord God, comfort them, Lord God. Holy Spirit, be their comforter, Father. We thank you and we bless you, Lord God. We ask you for every need that's represented in this building, every need that's represented the people that are watching online, Lord God. You are our way maker, God. Lord, you are so powerful that you split the sea, like the song says, like your word says, you split the sea. Lord God, so we ask you that you may split the seas of our problems, the mountains that we're facing, Lord God, the Goliaths that we're facing, Lord God. We claim we have the victory in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the powerful name of Jesus, Lord God, we declare your victory in this place and let inspired church say amen and amen give him a hand clap of praise this morning good morning inspired church you may be seated we are so happy to have you here to see you here guys if we have first time visitors there's a qr code behind me we would love to get some information from you. I always, every time I'm up here, I always love to brag on our church and our new seating and our acoustic treatment, professional acoustic treatment of these walls, the parking lot, the youth areas over there, the kids area, uh, the prayer room that's in the, in the front, our bookstore, our cafe store. Guys, I don't know about you, I love Inspired Church. And if you're visiting, this is the place to be, amen. 
All right. Our fast is over. Amen. Some of y'all are a little too excited about that fast being over. Well, let me tell y'all, it's not part of my announcements. It's part of my skit over here. I'm just let me tell you what happened. So I was fasting, um, like, like basically keto, no breads, no tortillas, no sugar, no sugary drinks, uh, no fast food. I started January 1st, and on January 2nd, Whataburger came out with water wings. <laughs> I said, devil, you are a cheater. <laughs> and I go to grandma's house, and she makes some tortillas that ain't now fresh, and she puts a stick of butter in front of me. I said, grandma, the devil is working on you, too. Like, what you? I'm over here trying to be closer to Jesus, and you got water wings, all the sort of flavors, buffalo. I haven't even tried them yet. I'm trying to stay away, guys. But anyways, but I'll tell you what. During that fast, you know, uh, I, I mentioned this on Wednesday, on Friday, the Friday before this, there was something I was praying for all month, heavily praying for. Actually, I've been waiting for almost a year for this to happen. And God, before the business hours closed at 6 p.m., I got my breakthrough. Amen. Let's just say like that. <laughs> so I pray that, that God is answering your prayers through our fast and also, and if he hasn't already, to continue. We're praying along with you. God is doing amazing things at our church. Amen. If you're ready to give uh, in person, there's five ways to give. If you're ready to give in person, our ushers are here. Just lift up your hands and they will serve you. Um, man, we need some, we need some uh, younger um, well, I'm saying we need some ushers that could be able to sprint up those, up those risers over there. I see Pastor Clark over there. He's just huffing and puffing. <laughs> Y'all leave that man alone and give him some help. Serve with us. Anyways, uh, oh, that's actually one of our announcements. Real quick. Uh, we want you to serve with us. Uh, we want you, this is the beginning of the year. We have New Year resolutions. One of the things, guys, you want to get involved, look at the and get involved in. We have a, a campaign called Serve With Us, whether it's... Um, Serving with the ushers, the greeters, uh, the front doors, whatever it is, we want to welcome you at Inspired Church. Also, um, I want to announce while we're, we're, if you need to be served for your offering, just keep, continue to lift up your hand. Uh, Inspired Legends is having their relaunch. They're having their first event February 10th, February 10th from 1 to 3 p.m. Um, there's going to be foods and games. And I think, Pastor James, is there a potluck going on? If there's any potluck you want to show up to, it's this one right here. You know, mothers be cooking, and, and so I might show up for that as well. But anyway, so they're going to have a time uh, for a community. is for our, our 60 plus in ages. And so we want to tell you out here at Inspire Church, I mentioned, I mentioned about the youth. I mentioned about the young adults. I mentioned the kids. But there's also a community of believers that are 60 and over. And we want to also welcome you and we want to tell you that there's a place for you here at Inspire. We haven't forgot about you. Amen. So they gather, they gather about once a month. They have activities and, um, and they have food and they have games and they have fellowship with each other. So we want to invite you, invite your grandmother, your aunt, your uncle, that type of thing. So uh, we also have communion on, communion on February 18th. Is that two Sundays from now? All right. Awesome. Yeah, some of y'all need to grab two cups when y'all come inside the church, amen? I'm playing. <laughs> Just grab one. <laughs> Maybe one per service. Okay. And then we have um, Prophet Lloyd Buster coming in on the end of the month, amen? So if y'all haven't been here for Pro Prophet, if some of y'all are new for Prophet uh, Lloyd Buster, if you haven't been here, guys, man, put your seatbelt on or take it off, actually, and... This, God just moves in a special way through this man of God, and so we want to invite you here for that. If you're ready to give, lift up your offering. There's five ways to give. We could put that back up, Myra. Um, there's my, the, my favorite way is always, to, the convenient way is through the app, so I want to encourage you to give and, and bless this time as well. And let's pray. God, we bless you for all that you do, Lord God. You are so good. You are so amazing, Lord God. You are so faithful, Lord God. We ask you that you may continue to be faithful to every head of household, every family, Lord God. We speak promotions, Lord God, in their jobs, Father. We speak raises in their jobs, Lord God. We speak unexpected blessings, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, Inspire.
We bless your name, oh God. Father, we want to be right where you are. Sing it with me. No, I can't get enough of your amazing love. None of the love I could. I can't get enough. I can't walk away. Say, I can't walk away. Like you cleanse the leopard. I For I have seen, for I have seen your face Forever changed by your love And I can't walk away Loud as you can, sing it with me I just want to believe that this morning. There's nothing like His love. There is nothing like your love. Taste it and I've seen in all the earth. No other love brings comfort. No other love brings peace. So we worship you, Father, in the beauty of your holiness. Oh, Jesus. Come on, sing it again. Say, sing, I can't get, I can't get enough. I can't get, no, I can't get enough. Oh, you're amazing, oh, you're amazing love. No. up in this room say say I just wanna I just wanna be where you are sing it to him I just wanna I just wanna be near your heart for there is nothing like your love there's nothing like it nothing like it there is nothing like your love sing it again oh God in your will, Father. I just want to, I just want to be near your heart. Cause there is nothing like there is your nothing love. Like your love. There's nothing like it, nothing like it. There, there is nothing like your love. So lift up your hands and worship Him. We give you glory, God. We give you honor, Jesus. Yeah. Jesus, I love. Jesus, I love. So. Lift it up in here. Oh. Say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Sing, oh. Jesus, I love you. 
He sings this back to you. There is, as you sing to him, he sings back to you. So I just want to be where you are. Because he inhabits the praises of his people. I just want to be near your heart. He's near to the brokenhearted. There is nothing like your love. Yeah. There is nothing like your love in all the earth. 
Let it happen. Let it happen. Let it happen for you. Let that touch happen. Receive, receive. Receive, receive. There's a touch of healing in this room. We send healing to those names that were on the screen. We send peace to those whose names are on the screen. We send comfort to those names who were on the screen. We don't want to forget about those. I believe that's what this presence is for. I believe the presence of God does many things. It's not just for here. I believe a lot of things happen when we worship. That's why worship is such a powerful weapon against the enemy. That's why it's the first thing he attacks. If he can stop you from worshiping, he can cut off your power source. He can cut off your connection. So worship, in a lot of ways, not only confuses the enemy, but it brings healing. It not only happens in here, it happens wherever you point it. Because you have that authority. You have that same authority. I don't know why I'm here, but I just want you to understand it's not a thing of the worship leader. It's not for my comfort for you to sing back to me. It's, it's an activation. When you sing, when you open up, if you notice, just the next time it happens, you notice it's like a, it's like a switch. Something happens, and, the, and it's, it's an atmosphere that fills this room. There is a presence that fills this room. His presence fills this room, and things happen. Not only for me, but for you. Not only for you, but the person sitting next to you. Not only for that row, but the row behind you, and the row behind you, and the row behind you, all the way up to the bleachers. So worship is vital in this season of our lives. It's the protection against the, the warfare that surrounds us. So never forget, worship is more than just a song. It's a connection. So we say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. So with that being said, lift up your voice in the room and give God a great shout of praise and gratitude because he's good and his mercy endured forever and the truth of who he is spans time and generation. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let heaven and earth adore him in this moment. We give you glory, God, for there is none like you and none can compare to you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody who agrees shouted amen. And it is so. Wow. It seems like I say that every Sunday. When I come up and the Spirit of the Lord is moving, there's nothing that takes your breath away like an encounter with the presence of the living God. Amen. And we've, we've learned in our studies of, of who God is, that his name Yahweh literally is the first word that a baby speaks the moment it is born. It's the last word the atheist speaks before he leaves this life. Be why? Because Yahweh, according to Jewish rabbis, is the sound of inhaling and exhaling. Yes, yes. And so the first word a baby says is not mama, it's <gasps> And even the atheist that denies the existence of God as he breathes his last breath is calling out on God the whole moment of his transition. And not only then, he's been doing so the entire length of his life while he verbally has been saying there is no God. And one of the great turnaround places in your life that is so transformative I mean, it is a game breaker. It is a changer. It is, it, 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 it shifts everything 
It's when you just decide to stop resisting the Lord. It's hard for you to resist the goads of the Holy Spirit is what God told Saul on the road to Damascus before he became the Apostle Paul. It's when you just decide to let go and say, here I am and there you are and I acknowledge you in my life. And I give you praise and honor and glory. And even though I may be inept, even though I may not know everything I need to know, and even though I may stumble along the way, you know what, God? From this time forward, you're there and I'm pursuing you. I want to know you. Have you come to that point in your life? Have you come to that, that place that's a that turns your life around. Why don't we just stop and give God some praise in this house? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. God bless you and you may be seated. And it's so good to welcome you to the house of the Lord today. Greetings to all of the Inspire Church family. Uh, Any first time attendees that we have here, I really look forward to meeting you. If I haven't met you yet and you've been here on different Sundays, I always go out to the lobby right after the service and all of our staff do. It's one of the most exciting and fulfilling parts of the entire weekend for us. We love doing that, connecting with people. I would look forward to meeting with you. We welcome you to this church. And I wanna say this, I I wanna say thank you. You guys are amazing. I keep saying this over and over again and people think I'm just joking, but I'm not. If you found out how much fun I was having doing what I'm doing, you wouldn't even give me a salary, you'd charge me an attendance fee, amen. You'd make me buy a ticket. I love being here. And I wanna thank you for partnering with us all of these years, those of you that have been with us through the years and those of you that have come to join us recently, you're amazing. And I'm gonna talk to uh, uh, to an issue today that I think is important. I'm going to address uh, some things. We have been in a, 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 a series on how to change your season. And the theme for this year is ready for it. I'm ready to pursue what God has for me. Uh, Today, uh, as you know, uh, we're in the first Sunday of Black History Month, the month of February. And I hope that you realize that, that every person is of equal value and worth. And we build this church upon that foundation. I think there ought to be a better applause than that. Come on, help me out. And and in today's world that is so fragmented, I thank God for the contributions of the black people of our nation, uh, all of the other groups, not all the groups have a, a month, like for example, First Nation, I don't think does, I'm part First Nation as well, but just simply stated, the contributions of this, the people in this room, look around, we are what America is about. And so I salute everyone who celebrates history this month, or as they say, black history this month, or as they say, black history is the history of this nation. And lest you feel left out, that's true about the other ethnicities as well. I have a book on my desk that I just got. It's the history of tri-racial people, not by tri. That's me. And uh, it, my grandfather, great-grandfather's name is even in there. And most of us are related in ways that we sometimes don't even stop to think about. And all this, you over there and me over here, and no, It's in the strength of togetherness, and that's what drives this month as being one of note and celebration. It's the effort to bring everybody together and fit in and acknowledge the worth of everyone. I hope I've articulated that in a way that is clear and 
and helpful because people come here and do you know what we hear over and over again? Wow, this is like heaven. People say that. We, this, they say, is extremely rare. I don't know. I'm here every Sunday, you know, but I know that I love it and we have worked with great intentionality in every aspect of our leadership, our teams, at no matter where you look, to make sure that is what is reflected. Because I believe that perfect worship is found in heaven where every nation, tribe, kindred, and tongue worship together around the throne of the Lamb. And we strive to replicate that here. And I hope that you feel the sincerity of my heart and spirit. Um, I'm turning to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. As I said, we have been in a series on how to change your season. And last Sunday, I spoke from something I've never heard ever preached from before. And that is the Smita law of every seventh year, trusting God enough to let the land remain fallow. That trust will change your season. I want to talk about something else that will change your season today. And I read the words of the Apostle Paul concerning this thing. I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches, in needs and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I, say it with me, strong. Hebrews 11, verse 32. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms. That's what I was talking about last week. Trust, trust, trust God in every area of your life. Trust him for healing, for deliverance, for finances. Learn to live within his law and the teachings of his law. They're not meant to cramp your style. They're meant to empower and give you freedom. Amen. And when you walk in trust or faith, you subdue kingdoms. They worked righteousness, obtain promises. Anybody have any promises you want to obtain? Stop the mouths of lions. Is there anybody out there that needs to see a few lions close their mouths? Quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword, and then this passage, out of weakness were made strong. Became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. And so today I want to talk to you about how to change your season, but the emphasis will be on this subject, turning weakness into strength. Father, would you please speak to us, open the word to our understanding, transform us today by giving us insight into how you view us, the love you have for us, the power you've enabled us to possess, and what it can do in our lives, and help us to grow in the areas that we're going to talk about today, that you may be glorified in Jesus' name. And everybody shouted and said, Amen. Amen. Dealing with weakness is a part of living life in this imperfect world. Would you agree? Yes. Weakness. Weakness is the quality or state of being weak in a particular area. To be weak is to be lacking strength, not able to exert strain or pressure, unable to withstand attack, limited in ability to function, lacking skill 
or proficiency or just simply ineffective. That's being weak. The word comes from the Middle English era and it has been around for many centuries. And there was a Norwegian word that it, they think it evolved from. And the word, the old Norwegian Viking word, simply meant to yield or to give in, to not have any resistance, not be able to stand against something. So something pushes and you fall back. And that means to be weak. And some of us found out this past month that we're a little weaker than we realized when it came time to fasting the whole month, right? <laughs> Amen. And of course you fasted how you felt led of the Lord to. But man, you can go all day without eating until it's time to fast. And you never miss it. But when you're fasting, oh my heavens. The neighbor's gumbo being cooked next door drifts right in the window and the aroma drives you insane. You know what I'm talking about. Fasting can be hard. We have areas of weakness that we confront when we're fasting. And some of you went on a Daniel's fast. I know that, I've heard a lot of people talk about it. But I wanna ask you, did you decide to remain a vegetarian? Anybody? I didn't think so. Amen. Someone who is a hunter said the other day that if God had meant for us to be vegetarians, he would have made broccoli more fun to shoot at. <laughs> think, think about it. Amen. Weakness. This body is weak. A process can work at one level, but when the demand or resistance increases, it can fail. Weaknesses exist in every aspect, dimension, sphere, and arena of life. They exist in every system, organization, relationship, person, church, sports team, I don't even want to go there, and so forth. In industry, for example, some systems are stronger than others, right? Engineers calculate the strength of a system based upon the peak level of demand at which the weakest component can still function well and effectively. In a refinery, that might be a valve. And so you, you've got all of this plant depending upon what has to pass through a valve, and that valve has to be rated for a certain amount of pressure and volume. It's true of buildings. This building seats are, is standing on a foundation. And uh, in Africa, I, I literally have seen it with my own eyes, buildings collapse because they built a foundation for one level, and I think it happens in many other places in the world, and they, they built the foundation to withstand the pressure, the weight of one story, and then they decided to add two or three and keep adding and the whole thing collapsed. All human beings have areas of weakness within us. As believers, our strengths, now I'm talking about strengths now, become our gifts that bless the kingdom of God and our Christ. They're like the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh that the Magi brought to Bethlehem to give to the Lord or the talents in the parable that the Bible says the master distributed among his servants. We each have different gifts, like one of the magi brought gold and another frankincense and another myrrh. But we also have weaknesses, and if we can, can refine those and turn those into strength and work through those, they become gifts to the kingdom of God as well. And we all have them. I want to emphasize that again, lest anybody in this room feel like I'm suddenly focusing on you. I'm not. I'm talking about me. It's, it's not my brother nor my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. We all have weaknesses. Why? We are a tripart creation, body, soul, spirit. And the weakest component of these three is obviously the body or the flesh. Jesus said it this way, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That will always be the case. But even when you're strong in some areas, the, the person you know might be weak in that area, and they may be strong in the area that you are weak in. And the Bible teaches us in the passages that 
that I felt led of the Lord to speak from this morning, that God loves us, embraces us as he did the apostle Paul, as he did all of those in the, the hall of fame of the faithful in Hebrews 11, that God embraces us and loves us and cherishes us in our weakness while at the same time is giving us strength by his grace to work through these and convert them into strengths. Now I need somebody to say amen. amen. And somebody else say, I'm a work in progress. So would you do that? Paul acknowledged that he had weaknesses and that had to be addressed. And he went to the Lord three times. We all do. Some are better with math than they are with science. And, and some with English grammar than they are with uh, PE, physical education. And uh, some are, are, are better and have strength in, in their emotional makeup. They, they can go through stuff and never be shaken. Others are weak and anything rattles them. I think of the disciples in the storm. They're running around like their hair's on fire and Jesus is curled up in a pillow asleep. Doesn't it amaze you that that is the case? I knew Anthony Clark, he used to come and he would be a part of our, our church at the old location and they can put his picture on the screen behind me. He was an amazing young man. Anthony. Uh, was the world's strongest teenager. And, and not only that, he once, he once pushed around a 6,000 pound elephant in a heavy duty wheelbarrow. He was active in prison ministry. Anthony was the first person, if I'm not mistaken, Steve, you can correct me, to bench press, he and Steve were friends, bench press over 800 pounds. That, that hurts my back just to think about it. Amen. But unfortunately, his heart was weak, and he died at the age of 38 of a heart attack. Some people are gifted organizationally. For others, organization is not their natural gift. They may think it is, but they would have a hard time organizing a dumpster fire. And don't know that, because our strengths often make us blind to our own weaknesses. Some people are weaker facing temptation than are others. Peter denied Christ three times, yet he addressed his weakness and became one of the leading apostles. Jesus told, chose Judas as one of the 12. He saw something in Judas that made him worthy of being included, but Judas's problem was unlike Peter. <clears throat> he never addressed his weakness, which was he could not handle money. And Pastor John Osteen used to say, regarding all of us spirit-filled folk, he said, our problem is, is that the Bible says that that which is flesh is flesh and that which is spirit is spirit. And we always think if we pray enough <clears throat> that we can make spirit become flesh. Our, our flesh becomes spirit. And we cannot, we can't do either one of those two things. As a pastor, I have areas in my life that I have to, to constantly work on. For example, I'm a person that has a strength in the ability to focus. I can focus. I can focus so much that I've had to train myself that I, I, I love excellence. I want excellence. I, because it, we represent God and when I walk in a room, if a picture is tilted a little bit, you know what I see? I don't see everything that's right, I see the picture that is. And the staff messes with me, they do. They'll go move a picture or a frame or rearrange something on my desk and I'll just sit there seething inside. My wife used to do this <clears throat> back in the day. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. 
Uh, back in the day, whenever I used to carry around a notepad and a pen, a trick my father taught me, and that was before they put one on the iPhone, it hadn't been invented yet, I would take it, I would set everything in one place, and I would have a whole bunch of little notes, and Jerry would come and she would feel it was her calling to rearrange them. And it would mess me up because it would get stuff out of sequence. And we used to have fights on stuff about stuff like that. Like, leave my notes alone. She'd move it from here to over here. And I would like, where's my notes? Where's my, that's my whole calendar for today. I walk into a room and I can be so focused that when I walk in, that I'm going to a particular thing to do a particular thing. And please, if I ever am in a situation where you see this, understand my heart. I can even walk by somebody because I'm so focused on this that I didn't see them there. That's a weakness. And what I've tried to do is correct that during the years. And so I've learned to walk slowly through the crowd. I teach that to anybody in leadership. We walk slowly through the crowd, even though we're on assignment. And just last Sunday, I had to tell a wonderful person, I was on my way, folk were meeting, waiting for me to meet with me about something in the lobby. And when I, I got out into the lobby, I, I just stopped, I, I walked slowly through the crowd and I greeted someone and they said, can I tell you something? I said, if you don't mind, please just give me a moment and I'll be back because they are waiting on me right over here. And I've learned that as much as I love people, that sometimes people might not realize that I've got something that I'm being required to do. And I have to develop the skill as a pastor to make them feel worthy of my time, though I've got this waiting to be done at that moment. Does that make any sense to you? Because if you don't, then people will feel like he doesn't have time or she doesn't have time. Strengths often have weaknesses built into them like I've just described. And we can be unaware they even exist. Samson was the strongest man that ever lived, but he had a weakness that was a half mile wide that he never addressed. And it, it ended up being his undoing. And so we have, to, we have to understand that God is in the details. How many of you have ever heard that the opposite of that, the devil is in the details. No, don't you believe it. Look around at the infinite wonders of creation and how different everything is. And you will have to confess, it's God that's in the details. And to be like God, we have to refine our ability to focus on details because they matter. Can you hear what I'm saying right now? Is there anybody in the building that relates? Don't look at your husband or your wife. Amen. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Focus is important. Our weaknesses become more visible and damaging the higher God promotes us. And this is what makes them matter. You see, this bottle of water, if this were the old kind of pulpit, I could hold it right here and you would never see it. But as I slowly raised it, you now see it. And life is like that. And so as you get elevated, people see your strengths. That's usually why you get elevated. But they also begin to see the weaknesses and those weaknesses can then damage us. I'm talking about I'm the person being elevated but I have a weakness that I need to address, and but I have an anointing that is kicked in. And rather than me dealing with my weakness, I'm focused only on my anointing. Am I relating to anybody right now? And so as I get elevated, everybody's seeing my anointing, but guess what else they're seeing? They're seeing my weakness, and this can hinder us from changing our season because God loves us so much that he doesn't want our promotion to be what undoes us. I'm preaching better than you're responding right now. In fact, let's just take a praise break and give God some praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. The weakness some people deal with is attitude. They don't have a positive perspective. Everything is always filtered through the pain of their past experiences and somebody's hurt them, walked away from them, crushed them, disappointed, said ugly things to them, and now then they're afraid to put themselves out there. And so everything is, if I do this, how am I gonna look if it goes wrong? And so they don't wanna take that step. And the key to that person changing their, their season is you've got to change your attitude too. Amen. Hold on, it's getting ready to get good. And to change your attitude, you have to change your conversation. You gotta change the way you talk to yourself. Not just how you talk to others, you gotta say something different to yourself. You've got to replace faulty thinking with the truth of scripture. And instead of worrying about, how am I gonna look if this goes south? If it doesn't work out well, what you've got to say is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am the head, I am not the tail. God's going to make a way. Even if I do fail along the way, that'll be, I'll be further down the road than I was sitting here where I'm at. And it's kind of like those four lepers outside Samaria. If we sit here, we die. If we go into the city, we might die. So if we go into the camp of the Assyrians, we might die. Die, die, die. So the one thing we do know is that we just can't sit here because death is certain. If we go to the camp of the Assyrians, who knows? We might find out they'll welcome us. And they went there and the miracle occurred in 2 Kings chapter number seven that you read about where in one day God reversed a situation of famine. That never would have happened had they just sat there. Sat there. I'm talking to somebody right now. And you will never go to where you need to be if you just sit there. You've got to get up and get moving and address the weaknesses in your life. Acknowledge your strengths, but be aware there are weaknesses. Often weaknesses come about as the result of injury or hurt or disappointment caused by others. We had nothing to do with creating the circumstance. Mephibosheth was a child when his dad Jonathan and his grandfather Saul were killed in battle on Mount Geboa. And when the news got back to the palace, Mephibosheth's nanny picked him up to run with him. He was a little, little guy. And she stumbled and failed, tripped over him, broke his ankles. They didn't have medical doctors and they didn't have x-ray and they didn't have all of that stuff back then. And he was crippled for the rest of his life. Do you know anybody that's been dropped do you know, are you the person that you were injured because of something somebody else did and now all these years later, you're still living with injury and pain? I've got a word for you today. I'm talking to somebody. I'm not just talking about things that happen as a child. A dad may have walked off or somebody may have said something unkind or somebody did something they shouldn't have done. But it can happen to you as an adult as well. Preach, pastor. Thank you. I believe I will. Amen. And you struggle because you, you, you're, you're crippled inside in a way that nobody can see. You're hurt. You have deep-seated, low self-esteem and insecurity because somebody has robbed you of something. Your trust in yourself. And you see, when David became king, this is what he did. He said, is there anyone of Saul's family that I may show kindness to? And they said, well, there's this young man named Mephibosheth, he was Jonathan's son. Jonathan was David's best friend. He's crippled in his feet. And David said, bring him. And he brought him to live in the king's palace. 
and he put him with his broken ankles underneath the king's table. He covered up the insufficiency or the weakness by the grace of the king because what was on the table hid what you could not see that existed in the form of a weakness in Mephibosheth. And just as the writer in the book of Hebrews said, and as it happened to countless others, what God is doing is out of weakness. He's making people strong. Out of weakness. Somebody needs to say, out of weakness. Come on, prophesy to yourself. I'm coming out of weakness. Coming out of weakness. I'm not gonna live with weakness inside of me anymore. Mm. Oh, somebody in the building, I feel it. The king was in essence telling Mephibosheth, my grace is going to cover your weakness. It will make up for what your area of infirmity and where your challenge is found. People will hurt you. But I look at the story of the Good Samaritan that Jesus told. He's on his way to Jericho. You remember the story. And he fell among thieves. He didn't intend to. And they robbed him and wounded him and left him unable to complete his journey. Who am I talking to right now that is stuck in the same place, unable to shift into your season, unable to get to your destination, unable to continue your journey because you have been wounded and you're stuck in one place. The good Samaritan came along, picked him up and bound his wounds. I need somebody to say hallelujah. Not only that, but he poured oil, that's the Holy Spirit, into the wounds and he poured wine into the man. To, that's joy. God will give you joy and the Holy Spirit, he will pick you up, he will get you on your journey again. Hallelujah. Mm, mm. He didn't stop there. He put him on his own donkey and carried him to the inn. And when you can't walk, I know somebody that will carry you. When you can't get up from where you're at, all you gotta do is cry out, Jesus. I don't know what that man did to get the Samaritan's attention. He may have been unconscious, or maybe he's over there whimpering, or maybe he said, hey, all I can tell you is it's been my experience that no matter where you're stuck, if right where you're at, you lift up your voice and call upon the name that is above every name, he will stop and pick you up. He will get you going again. He won't leave you. He's not going to leave you. And he gave the innkeeper two pence. That's the church. And gave 2,000 years. That's the two pence. And said, here, take care of him until I come back. And just so you know, if there's anything else owed, I'll take care of it. Somebody in this house needs to say, Jesus has got this. I don't think you got it yet. Jesus has got this. If you need a miracle, he's a, the miracle worker. He's got this. If you need a breakthrough, he's the way maker. They sang it a while ago. He's got this, hallelujah. If you need healing, he's Jehovah Rapha. I'll stand on that promise until the day I leave this planet. He's got this. You need a breakthrough, he's the breakthrough giver. Somebody in this building, hear what I'm saying. You need strength, he's the God of more than enough strength. You need grace, his grace is sufficient for every single need. We've been watching this at work in our own family recently, and I give God praise. I think it's, Three Sundays ago, maybe four, we had something happen in our family with a granddaughter. I'll tell you that in just a moment. 
Have you ever heard of the art of kintsugi? Kintsugi. The Japanese have a unique way of repairing something that has been broken and they turn it into something more valuable than it was before it was broken. They take the broken pieces and they put them back together with gold. Painfully broken, beautifully restored. Somebody ought to hear this word painfully broken in a marriage that didn't work. Painfully broken in a relationship that failed. Painfully broken in your finances, but you can be beautifully restored because God will put you back together with gold. My youngest granddaughter, Michaela, I think she's 25 now. When she was 13, she went to her best, best friend's house and the mother of her best friend, who was a businesswoman that everybody, we all, we all thought could be trusted, the mother opened the pantry door in the kitchen and brought out some drugs and introduced her own daughter and my youngest granddaughter to drugs. And that began a almost 13 year ride into addiction. She's OD'd more times than we have fingers on both hands. I'm talking about chest compression kind of OD. 911 OD. Narcan, everything else. Three Sundays ago, maybe it was four, she was baptized in the chapel. Painfully broken. She has sat and cried with me and poured out her heart to me. She didn't want to be there but she couldn't break free. Painfully broken. Broken in relationships. She, her mom and dad have been crushed throughout this process at their wit's end. And then God began to work. And somehow the prayers of this church and her family and her mom and the rest of the family have begun to reach out because there is somebody coming down the road when you can't get up by yourself and I guess I need to talk about it. I need to say it. The priest passed by on the other side of the road and the Levite, but the one that's coming right now, he'll stop where you are. He will call a halt to the trip and pick you up and get you the help you need. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Give God some praise in this house. I'm talking to a mom or dad that thinks their child is beyond hope. They're not. They're not. But this is what I wanted to tell you. When I, I finished in the lobby at the end of the 11 o'clock service last Sunday, meeting our, our guest and visiting with people, I went down this hall and entered the receptionist office. And, and as you walk to my, toward my office, there's a library. And I walked in, there's a little common area with a table and a sofa and some chairs. And Michaela's sitting there by herself. She's always been an extremely bright young lady. Never had to put forth any effort in school. And she's sitting there and she's got her Bible open. And she, I, I looked to see where it was open to. And she had a notepad and she was writing out my sermon. And the family told me she feels so bad because the rest of the family has been around church all these years. They know the word of God and she's 12 years behind. And she's determined she's gonna catch up. Can somebody join with me and say, I'll receive that, I believe that. 
I'll stand with you on that. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Parent, don't give up. Grandmom, don't give up. Dad, don't give up. Hello, don't give up. Don't give up. The Samaritan is coming down the road. There's somebody that is coming that has the oil and the wine. Your loved one needs painfully broken but beautifully restored. And I'm done. And then put that picture back up there one more time. Because how many pieces have you been broken into? And you know what we would do in our culture? What happens when somebody gets broken like that? Or something gets broken? Throw it away. God doesn't throw it away. God makes treasure out of what some people think is trash. I need to say that again. Somebody needed to hear this message because God's going to turn your weakness into a strength. Just one minute longer and I'm done. I had another granddaughter that for a little while got off track. And she had moved away and the whole college thing when she moved to university got got her all messed up and there were some other things going on and, and she was wounded and broken and even lost an awareness of who she was. And they just moved her back the other day from out of state where she had been living and she's on fire for God. And she wept because she said, I lost my way for a while and didn't know who I was and I feel like I embarrassed my family. No, baby, no. It's all about a thing called grace and you put your brokenness under the king's provision. Hallelujah. Because you see on that table, there is forgiveness and on that table, there is grace and on that table, there is anointing and on that table, there is faith. It's not about you. It's about what's on the table. And, and if you will let God work on it, he's going to turn your weakness into strength. And she's been participating in some of the things that have been going on. And I have had different reports where they've come back and they told me, wow, wow, she is amazing as a speaker. You don't be surprised at what God does, in my case, with two of my grandchildren. In your case, what he does with you or your kids or your grandchildren. Because God will turn your mess into a message and your... God will make your brokenness become a ministry. So real quick, how do you turn weakness into strength? Number one, acknowledge and address areas of weakness in your life. That's what Paul, or the writer of Hebrews, did when he pointed out weaknesses, and then Paul as well, when he said, I sought the Lord three times for this. He knew what his weakness was. He identified it. Number two, If your weakness comes from brokenness, bring the broken pieces to the master. He can put them together when you can't. Number three, until then, let God's grace cover your weaknesses. Can I, I I could go off on a tear right now. I could do, I, I really could, about how churches have sometimes in our desire to preserve to preserve the holiness and integrity of what God is doing, we have sometimes thrown people away that we shouldn't have thrown away because he didn't throw them away. But we're so worried about what we look like and who we're seen with. Just want to let you know if you've got some broken areas in your life, We love you. We welcome you. And then, and you're going to need to hear the rest of this next week, connect with others 
who are stronger than you if you want to become stronger. Stand with me across the building. Anybody ready for it? Anybody ready for it? Are you ready to shift your season? Ready to change your season? Every head is bowed. I want to see the hands of those in this building that would slip up their hands and say, I need Jesus. I need Jesus. Raise it up high right where you are. I need Jesus. I've got some brokenness in my life just all over the building. I need Jesus. So many hands. How many of you, let me just ask you this while every head is bowed. How many of you have resisted admitting this to yourself, but in this service today, you would have the courage to just slip up your hand and say, yes, I have some weakness in me. I have some weakness in me. All the rest of you are perfect. I really am glad to know that. I would like to. Or you just already know the areas of your weakness. We're so afraid to become vulnerable. But I will be outside in the lobby and would love to shake the hands of all the perfect ones that are here today. (laughs) Maybe some of it might rub off on me. You see, I'm being a little facetious because I want to point out the ridiculousness of not being able to confront ourselves, face ourselves, own up to things, and then move beyond it. Because if you don't confront it, you never get beyond it, never. Father, every one of those that raise their hands, I pray for right now in the name of Jesus. Those that didn't raise their hands but should have. Especially those that need Christ in their life, save them. Write their name in the book of life. Embrace them with your grace. Forgive them of their sins. And let this be the beginning of a journey toward wholeness. A journey that they walk out day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year. A journey where they discover, as Paul did, as the writer of Hebrews, who was probably Paul, also pointed out, that out of our weakness, we can be made strong. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Let's have a celebration for a moment. Welcome everyone that prayed that. Come on, let me hear you. Let's have a party. Amen, amen. What a timely and powerful word that God is able to take your weaknesses and turn them into strength. Remember that his grace is sufficient for you, but you've got to give him those weaknesses and watch him use it for his glory. If you would love to receive prayer, salvation, or baptism, I ask that you kindly follow the information on the screen. If you would love to receive our daily devotion from our pastor, it is like a full course meal. I strongly encourage you to sign up for that. I promise you it will be a tremendous blessing to you and share it with someone as well. We also ask if you would like to get involved and find out more about who we are and what we have available to you here at Inspire Church, that you go on our website at inspirechurchhouston.org and just search and see what you can connect to. We look forward to seeing you. We look forward to seeing what God has in store for you. And as you go throughout the week, remember that his grace is sufficient for you and that his strength is made perfect in your weakness. There isn't anything that God is not able to turn around. He's able to give you beauty for ashes, but if you just give him those weakness, if you just give him those ashes and watch him get the glory out of this. So as you go throughout the week, remember that we love you, but most importantly that your heavenly father, Jesus Christ, that he loves you more than you can ever know. So have a blessed week. Take care. Bye.